to record now. So, so Dutton, please take it away. Yeah, sure. Thank, thanks, Mike. Um, uh, hope you see my screen, right? I just want to make sure everything is clean and neat. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, let's start and uh, don't spend that much time because I have a, a nice demo to go through. Uh, so thank you, thank you everyone for joining. Um, a bit of a background what I will be doing today. I'll be showing uh, an application that is um, focused on a clinical trial in the pharma industry. That's actually um, based on a hyperledger fabric. In particular, you know, Hyperledger, that there are multiple um, projects there, but uh, the solution I'm showing right now is focused and based on, on Fabric. And uh, the um, actually the tool and the platform that I'll be showing is actually the one that uh, uh, itself is based on, on, on Fabric uh, using uh, blockchain uh, to manage some important parts. I'll focus on that as well of the process. But in particular, uh, we will be going, I will give you some background about uh, the application itself, like the platform itself and, and uh, Sanofi as a company and the team behind. Uh, then we will go through a particular uh, use case for pharma, pharma industry, uh, in particular the clinical trial, as I explained, uh, and we will do a demo and at the end, I'll leave some time for questions. So we are a small group. Uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me if something's not clear, by the way. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, let's let's start. So uh, Sanofi, uh, we are actually, let me just go to the next slide. Um, small startup company, uh, almost two years now. Uh, we've been focused uh, entirely uh, in the first year uh, on building uh, two, a software as a service for Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, that is uh, actually consortia that I will demonstrate in a while. Uh, and we also do uh, projects uh, in different industry and, and um, pharma is uh, one of our focus uh, areas. And um, yeah, we are a small team, uh, professionals from Canada, um, and our background is uh, actually coming out of enterprise application development and technology development um, for, for, for a decade now. <laughs> we are uh, friends there that know each other for a long time, and we've been working on, on uh, real enterprise uh, products and projects. Uh, I won't mention companies, but uh, one of the big enterprise application vendors in the in the world. Um, so uh, let's go next. Um, we've been through a couple of projects and uh, why we decided to go with uh, Consortia is actually uh, because of the um, multiple projects we've been on. Uh, most of the time, unfortunately, we had to spend actually on building the network, talking about consensus uh, mechanisms, uh, and dealing, of course, with the challenges of onboarding organization on, on the same network. Um, so we had to do most of those things manually, uh, and that ends up taking around 70% of our time, which translates into cost to a project. This is how we came up with the idea, let's try to automate those things. We're not the only one, of course, out there that doing that. Um, but uh, we wanted to have something that automates those uh, manual steps. Um, so we avoid um, manual errors that actually happens all the time. If you try to replicate the same network, uh, for example, in different stages of your development. Um, and of course, the other very, very important thing for us was to be able to uh, deploy those networks uh, across clouds. Of course, that is not specific to healthcare, right? But it is essential for any use case out there. So when we are talking about um, um, a distributed ledger technology and uh, blockchain uh, in general is about um, of course, in, in the context of permission blockchains, I'm not talking about public blockchains here, so I forgot to mention that it's, it's entirely on the permission private side of it. Um, very essential part is actually how you govern your, uh, your consortium. 
because there is a concept, there is a policy, who can do what, um, who can invoke a particular chain code. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really a complex process behind uh, that is extremely different compared to what we uh, have right now uh, in, um, based on a client um, server architecture. So, um, yeah, that's how we ended up with consortium. Um, again, cross-cloud deployments, uh, one of the most important uh, thing for us, uh, and uh, of course, uh, automation uh, of uh, deployment of applications. So how, how it works in general. Um, so first of all, we know that the companies that uh, form a consortium, they will be probably business partners. and. Um, those companies, um, they usually have their own uh, vendors in terms of infrastructure um, and tools um, and even applications, right? So some of them may be um, using Oracle, uh, some of them Azure or uh, Microsoft um, Dynamics or whatnot. So, so there is a variety of applications and, and actually infrastructures every company use. Um, so usually they even don't um, go with just a simple a single vendor, of course. Uh, we will see uh, or we see a lot of mix, um, mix in meaning even not just on the application side, um, but also mix on the cloud side. So um, we, when we form those um, consortia actually, uh, we have to be clear that we cannot expect that all of them, um, all of the partners on the same network will be uh, running their nodes on the same uh, uh, provider, cloud provider. Um, some of them uh, will, re uh, will have a contract uh, with uh, their own <clears throat> cloud provider. It might not be one of the big uh, guys out there like AWS, um, Azure, or, or other clouds, it could be uh, some proprietary vendor that they work with, or even on premise. There are some many many of uh, of those companies have their own data centers still, um, and we have to expect that there, there, there will be those cross cloud uh, deployments. And um, to organize your infrastructure is one thing, but then to manage all of that across your business partners, to manage your consortium, consortium across business partners um, is, is uh, becoming a challenge. Um, so after you actually deploy your nodes and deploy, um, um, once you have your nodes, right, <clears throat> and define your organizations, uh, you move to the next step to deploy your um, uh, applications. Right. So um, those application we know in Fabric, there is a, a concept of uh, having that uh, purely decentralized. So everyone is actually responsible uh, to deploy. There is a process behind, of course, to deploy their own applications um, on the network, <coughs> on their own infrastructure. Um, and of course, the last, but the I think one of the most challenging part is actually how to govern those networks ac across different partners. And this is, uh, this is where actually uh, we, we, we have a solution for. So let's, uh, let's now talk about um, pharma. So all the things I, I said so far, they are problems that are uh, there across uh, any, any solution um, or any industry. So let's take in particular um, a typical use case for pharma. <clears throat> so um, we, I, I took kind of three companies here um, or three entities um, that will be part of a network. And the typical case for a trial, I, I, I simplify it, overly simplify, of course, the, the use case just to make it more understandable. There is a lot of detail behind the scene and business processes running. But let's let's make it simple so, so that, that we all understand. Um, so I have Nova, that is a pharma company, and that pharma company uh, perform trials, right? So they have a drug, they want to put it on, on test, 
uh, and depending on the country where they do the trials, they have, of course, different regulations. In US, there will be one set of regulations. In Asia, there will be a third one, China, whatnot. So every country could have their own regulator and their own internal rules on, on how those trials should be performed. Of course, we have cross international trials that you have to manage, but let's for our use case focus on, on a particular trial that uh, goes in US. And of course, in US, you have FDA as a regulator for those trials. Um, now, the thing is that the trial um, process itself um, may uh, be performed in uh, one or multiple hospitals, uh, sites. It may not be a hospital at all. The patient or whoever is the uh, part of the trial may even not be at the hospital all the time. They may go home and whatnot. But there, there, there are tons of regulations how you do that, right? So safety and, and, and public health is very important thing. And every government wants to make sure that those trials are safe for people, right? So um, there is one particular thing that FDA requires. Um, for example, if something goes wrong during a trial, for example, a patient goes or develops a serious condition. It could be something very simp uh, simple, like uh, developing a cough, or it could be um, a more serious thing like a heart attack, for example. Okay, those things could happen during a trial, of course. And that's why um, uh, usually when those events uh, happen, uh, then everyone that's involved on the trial, that means the site, let's simplify it, take it as a hospital, and the pharma company and FDA, they want to actually um, be aware uh, when such thing happens to a point that there is a regulation for example that requires that all of those cases are reported to fda within 24 hours now what is the problem the problem of course is in the processing of those cases um, we're talking here about three business entities. In reality, there, there are more than that. Um, as I explained, I'm sim simplifying the use case, but there are more entities involved into that. Um, and uh, what they wanna know is, um, or what they wanna do is uh, when um, the case happens or the condition develops at the site, the first thing um, that, um, uh, they file a report, so uh, describe all the conditions, everything that happens. So they send that to pharma, uh, to the pharma company, which is the uh, Nova in our case. So they will have to actually take a look at uh, the file. Um, they will assign an investigator that will go through the data, decide if that needs to be reported to FDA or not. And then once this is done, uh, that information um, either goes to FDA or just stays within uh, between the pharma and the site, uh, the pharma uh, the, and Nova and the site. So the uh, the thing is that um, during exchanging of the information, there is a lot of manual process behind the scenes. So there could be like information exchanged over the phone or information exchanged through faxes. Um, a particular agent working or investigator working on a particular case. So they always could miss an inf uh, a very important information or we will need follow-ups, we will need to verify with the site and the hospital. Um, confusions may happen. So it's, it's very tricky and, and uh, very time consuming and of course costly process. It's just because uh, it's very, very hard to verify that the information that's been received from the site then processed uh, at um, the uh, pharma company and then transmitted to FDA is actually consistent and, um, uh, and uh, verifiable, right? So you don't know, uh, you don't trust that information to start with. So that's why double checks, cross checks needs to happen. Uh, many of those things are done on paper or through faxes or through phone calls. Okay. So, of course, those partners, they have their own internal systems. So I just spoke about the problem. Um, so they have their own internal systems. Um, of course, the problem is that it's extremely expensive to connect those systems, right? So we know how 
uh, especially for those of you who worked into uh, on enterprise projects we know how hard it is to connect uh, systems right um, i'm not just even talking about connecting um, uh, different uh, business partners um, systems right um, so we, we have the, those uh, techniques to do it actually i'm not saying the, the, we cannot do it without the ot of course we do right so we have web, web apis that's being called uh, here and there you know connecting talking to system the, the, there are different um, uh, concepts of, of exchanging data of course but there is uh, it's very hard actually to guarantee the um, consistency of the data or uh, to trace after the data right so what we want to do and and of course there is a delay right so you uh, take one, uh, information from one of your partners you don't know how old that information is you don't know the quality of the information um, and um, then you don't have it real time actually so it could take days until something comes to you and it might be too late so this is where um, beauty comes into place and blockchain in particular where we can actually exchange data real time and as you know that happens through the consensus and the uh, signature that's put on each transaction by each business entity that participates in, in the transaction so that's that's how actually whenever something important happens and that's been recorded um, transacted on on the ledger then everyone involved um, will actually get to know uh, what is the current status and we'll see the uh, information uh, that is um, uh, um, real time and the information that's important to make a decision or to investigate and of course there is no need to audit it right so it's already signed uh, so they everyone knows that the data that they have on the ledger it's already trusted so um, let's take the uh the demo right now so um i will use consortia but behind the scene that's hyperledger fabric again just to to mention that uh in case uh yeah uh, we have time um just to mention that in case i missed i think i already did, but anyways so we will use um three accounts on consortia um we have the infrastructure that uh, runs on a cloud provider if I remember right, uh, some of them are on DigitalOcean, some of them, um, I think, uh, FDA is on Azure, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they run on different cloud providers. Those are actually machines um, that we already bootstrap for the sake of the demo. So I have three accounts in consortia. Um, every one of those accounts represent a different entity. <clears throat> that is Nova. So the hospital, I named it Boston General Hospital that's the uh, site and then i have the fda that's going to have the fda account so so far i have set up in a way that <clears throat> novum and the hospital already deployed an application um, a black uh, happy ledger application where um, the hospital can record a case okay for um, a particular patient uh, create a case uh, uh, shortly editing, um, providing the uh, symptoms, uh, for example, uh, cough, whatnot. And then <clears throat> uh, uh, Nova uh, will assign an investigator who's going to take a look at the file and uh, decide what to do with it. So that's already in place. And uh, let me show you what's behind. Um, I I try not to go that technical actually, so you don't get confused. Uh, it's it's um, kind of uh, Hyperledger Fabric specific, uh, most of those things. Um, but um, in, in general, this is actually, you know, the technology just running the application and I will show the application after. Uh, so assuming that we have that, um, uh, what I will demonstrate is how actually FDA Okay, will come onto, onto the network uh, where the hospital and Nova are already are. We'll deploy the chain code or the smart contract. Uh, we'll deploy their own application and they will start seeing the data uh, real time. Okay, so um, what I have so far, let's start from the application because that's gonna be the easiest thing for you to understand. So what I have deployed already is uh, 
let me see the uh, the Boston. Okay, so <clears throat> that is the actually the consortium management dashboard. Um, and I have my applications. So see, I have my uh, chain codes or smart contracts. Um, that's my trial um, chain code. And I have my web application that's running on uh, that particular um, uh, machine. So I will request it. Okay, so you can take a look at it and how, how it um, looks like. Okay. So of course, um, how Boston's gonna use it, it's a question of integration and implementation. Um, some of the hospitals, they already do use um, uh, mobile devices or maybe um, uh, tablets, right? So it's easier to enter the information. That's just a web interface, but those things are actually UIs can be easily converted into a real web application. Uh, sorry, a uh, mobile application, for example. So they can easily enter the data at the time they um, uh, meet the, the patient, right? So the whole point here is how fast we share information uh, with our um, uh, business partners. So here, what I can do as a hospital, I already recorded a case actually here. Um, it's a very simple UI. Uh, have in mind that is, um, the, uh, that, that is the very stripped down application for the use case. But uh, what, what we can do here is actually to enter the patient name. Here, usually those patients are already um, uh, very likely, depending on what software is used as the hospital, already uh, deployed or uh, how to say, already created in their own internal systems. Again, the thing is that DOT is not a solution for um, keeping a master data of your patients, right? So this is where we do expect to have integration uh, with uh, the system that the hospital is using right now. So we actually can pull information about the patient uh, master records. So we can actually link that transaction to a particular patient uh, on, on the ledger. So I will come up with a name. Usually here you will get um, um, a name, uh, let's, let's put my name here. So, uh, and then I'll do, I um, have a fever. <clears throat> I hope I don't, <laughs> so, you know. the, here is the site. Actually, that's uh, just an, uh, an example where the same application could be used by multiple hospitals. So, so that not all of them have to actually take care of the um, uh, setting up their own application instance and all that. So th there could be like uh, one application that handles multiple multiple hospitals to reduce the cost. So I can actually record the case and um, while that's done, uh, let me just put it, uh, put the other, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I was too fast. So as you see, this is where my uh, second, um, uh, case uh, was recorded about me that I'm having the fever and with the date and the status. Okay. So let's now take a look at the application that FDA is running. So, uh, sorry, uh, Nova. <clears throat> uh, so let me take the application URL. Okay, and as you see, um, they see already the case that I've just reported, okay? So this is where they can actually um, investigate, um, like trigger the process of investigating the, uh, the case, okay? So they will assign someone who will uh, actually uh, take a look at the case and I'll just refresh my um, uh, UI here. Uh, they will assign someone who will um, uh, take a look at the symptoms, uh, take a look at the patient. Actually, have in mind that, that my name is something that might be um, very um, con confidential. Okay, in terms of uh, what age I am, like date of birth, and all of those things. There is a regulation how uh, about uh, not, uh, uh, how uh, how much information you exchange uh, about your patient with your business partners, and uh, uh, in in my case, I do share a name, but you could actually easily uh, filter out those details uh, with um, uh, uh, when you actually show that into to, to FDA, for example. FDA may 
not uh, sorry they uh, will will need to know the details where whereas pharma company as such uh, they're not that much interested where that person leaves exactly address and whatnot they just want to focus on the uh, deciding and um, adjudicating if that case needs to be reported to FDA or not so uh, we keep our identity of our um, the, the identity of our patient anonymous so um, okay so this is uh, what they have right now so of course um, <clears throat> what I want to show right now is um, uh, FDA point of view. So let's assume those guys are already kind of solving the problem they're having so they can record cases, uh, they can uh, see the data real time, uh, all of that of course recorded on the ledger so they have a proof uh, when that's been done, a transaction's been done, there is a consensus and endorsement done by the peers of uh, both organizations so they know the data is, uh, is in a good standing and good quality. Um, so FDA comes into picture, okay? So the, the, the whole problem about it is um, how FDA will onboard um, the existing network. And if you take a look at it, I'll just show you side by side <clears throat> with Nova and I'll just show you the topology of the network. <clears throat> so those uh, channels here are actually, that's actually the ledger you know, Hyperledger Fabric allows you to run multiple uh, ledgers or uh, blockchains. Uh, so you can actually um, uh, use some concepts to manage properly the, um, the data that you're sharing with your business partner uh, and keep it anonymous or like isolated in, in their own silos. Um, so this is the, the trial, which is, that's how I named the channel. And uh, though uh, the, um, Nova, that's on the right, uh, they have uh, uh, the uh, one peer, okay? That's part of the trial channel, okay? That uh, uh, endorses the transaction on the trial channel. And on the left, we have uh, Boston with one peer that is a part of the same channel. That's how actually they endorse and see, have the same view on the, on the transaction that happened on that ledger. Now, uh, the, just give me a sec, okay. So <laughs> how actually, um, how easy it is to, um, to uh, make FDA part of that network, okay? In reality, it's extremely hard. Okay? So it's not like it's impossible, no, not at all. It's, it's, you just go on the, uh, on the um, Hyperledger uh, fabric uh, documentation, website, uh, you follow steps, and you end up getting there. The problem is that uh, it usually takes a lot of time. Uh, and the uh, reason for that is uh, because it's very easy to make a mistake. And one simple mistake you make, um, you may make it early in the process and then nothing works and uh, good luck repeating it again and again. So this is where we kick in and actually automate the process. So let's, um, I'll, I'll show you now FDA. That's uh, again, a different account on, on a consortia. I already have bootstrapped uh, a peer that belongs to FDA, okay? So uh, that peer runs on their own infrastructure, and as you see, it's just a peer. It doesn't have any ledger on it. Okay. So usually what FDA will do, uh, they will pick up their infrastructure or a cloud provider. They will bootstrap their own peer. Uh, and of course, um, they will want to join the um, ledger, right? So the trial channel, the trial ledger, so they can start seeing the transactions that already flow between uh, the hospital, uh, the Boston hospital and, and Nova, how they do that, okay? So this is where we have um, a so-called um, uh, channel updates or that, that is our network governance process, okay? And uh, this process is actually ena enables you easily to uh, take uh, an organization and make it part of an existing ledger, or in other words, join organization on, on the network. 
So what I will do, um, uh, first I will have actually to, because that, that there is a policy behind, not, not, it's a permission network, right? Not, not everyone can join it and start looking into the, transa in, in the transactions that have been recorded there or see data on the ledger. They'll have to ask for a permission. Okay. So um, permission <clears throat> that, um, how, how we do it, it's, it's purely actually automates whatever is available uh, already there. There is nothing proprietary here. Uh, you can do it without consortia, um, as I mentioned. It's just, it's much, much easier. We automate the process behind the scene. And actually all the governance process that uh, I'm showing right now, it is um, uh, uh, implemented on top on Hyperledger Fabric itself. Um, this is very important point uh, and a design decision on our side is because we want to keep that open in a way that multiple vendors like consortia um, and, and cloud providers can actually enable such process between them. Of course, um, there will be companies that um, they will use Azure blockchain as a service or AWS Hyperledger Fabric as a service or whatnot. So at the end of the day, they must have an easy way to actually govern their networks, even though they run on different cloud providers. And how you do that, right? Easily. So uh, there should be a way of, of doing it in a, in a uh, you know, um, very, um, a controlled way and, and you cannot expect that you will have a well-experienced fabric developer to do that uh, for every consortium out there. So um, let's, um, let's show you. So the first thing that FDA will actually request uh, the one of the organization, in my case, I'll do it with Nova to actually uh, make them part of the ledger. So for that reason, I will <coughs> type in the, the name of the of the ledger okay so i will have actually to provide the um, account id of the process of uh, the processor and in my case uh, as i mentioned that's gonna be uh wait uh, nova so i'll just switch to nova so i will take my um, token uh, my account token Okay, that thing I will usually share with FDA uh, over email uh, or many any secure um, uh, secure channel. So I'll, I'll, in my case, I'm just doing it on one machine. I'll just copy paste. But usually that's uh, nothing more than a, it's it's not kind of encrypted or um, <laughs> uh, vital information. It is just a base 64 uh, encoded. Um, um, let me just. Uh, I'll show that to you, um, encoded a uh, message about what is the um, name of the vendor, which is consortium in our case, and that's the uh, unique identifier of the Nova account. That's it. So nothing secure about it. Um, so I will say, uh, um, I will choose the MSP or the membership service provider. In my case, of course, I have just one. Uh, there might be cases where I'm managing multiple membership or multiple organizations. That's why the drop down. Uh, and all I have to do is actually, essentially what I'm saying here, I wanna join the ledger trial, okay? Name trial, and I want um, uh, that account to process my request, okay? So all I have to do is just create. At that point of time, I'll just flip back to the, uh, sorry, uh, to the um, other, to Novo, okay? At, at, at that point of time, um, actually, what I'm doing right now is just uh, sorry, uh, FDA. Okay. I'm uh, just um, ex um, creating um, uh, a joint request uh, on the ledger. That's um, that's actually um, uh, a transaction that happens on on Hyperledger Fabric itself. So I have the request ID. Okay, so here um, I, um, the system will actually automatically attach the certificates of FDA. Those are the public certificates like the, the uh, self-signed certificate authority certificates. So actually uh, the network uh, will be able based on those certificates to drive the permissions correctly. Okay, so I don't have to actually attach that manually. It all happens automatically. 
So once I have the um, request ID, uh, I can send that to Novo. Okay. And I'll say, hey, uh, guys, I have created the join request uh, to join your um, ledger. And please um, decide or like approve my request and, and, and go through the process. So what, what Novo will do, it will just um, take the um, uh, ch channel join request ID and it will create a channel change transaction. Okay, so have in mind that is um, uh, something that has been created. <clears throat> so this means we have a join request that uh, an organization that wants to join a consortium between Nova uh, network uh, that's already um, running and governed um, between Nova and Boston. General Hospital. So in order for that request to go through, uh, there is um, a, a policy in Fabric, which is the default one that requires that majority of the participants on the network to agree on that request. Okay. So what, what they will do, they will have actually to create the request to change it, to, to update the ledger, to give permissions to FDA to see the data. And every one of the, particip the participants will have to sign the request. Okay. So uh, what I've just did is actually to uh, create the transaction. Okay. That is um, actually um, a transaction that will be recorded on the ledger, but before I'm even able to submit it to the ledger to give permissions to FDA, uh, every organization on the network will have to sign it. Um, and because I'm with Nova account, um, um, as you see, I'm all, all only able to sign it with, um, uh, with uh, Nova because I'm the one who's uh, actually Nova account is managing Nova organization. I cannot sign it with Boston because Boston organization is managed by a different account. And actually all the certificates, all the private keys, all the um, 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 access to, to those keys and then to be able to sign is governed by Boston. So I, I, I cannot sign it on behalf of Boston. So I will trigger meanwhile the, uh, the sign, uh, the signature of the transaction uh, from FDA point of view, uh, from, uh, sorry, Nova point of view. Let me just move that around. And I will go to, um, uh, what is that, the Boston, uh, okay, so as you see, <clears throat> Boston automatically got uh, a channel change request, uh, which is assigned to him to approve. So they will have the same uh, view of it. Okay, so they will see the same transaction. Again, all of the information you're seeing there is driven and powered by Hyperledger Fabric. So it's, it's a blockchain driven um, approach here. And they already see that the um, Nova is actually in the process of signing. It takes time because it's a, it's a, it's a, a scheduled uh, process that happens behind the scenes. So uh, Nova is actually already signing the transaction. Okay. So what they can do uh, is actually uh, take a look at the transaction, uh, make sure that they're happy with what they see, that they're giving FDA a permission to uh, actually join uh, the network, uh, which is actually uh, the trial channel, as you see up there, okay? Uh, so this is actually the detail, kind of a technical detail on the transaction itself. Um, so they can actually see who's joining, uh, what is the policy, the new policy and all that. Uh, so what they can do uh, is actually to uh, trigger the uh, signature process. Okay, so uh, I will just sign <coughs> on the uh, with the um, uh, Boston uh, pro, um, account or Boston organization, and I will go back to uh, my uh, Nova uh, view. Okay, so as you see, my uh, channel change request is already processing, and I'm seeing that Boston is actually currently signing it. So once I have the uh, full signatures uh, received, okay? Uh, then I'll be able to deploy the change and actually join FDA on the channel. So as you see, I now have the required signatures to uh, change uh, the, um, the policy <clears throat> and the topology of my trial channel so I can, uh, so that I can include uh, FDA. 
Okay, so I will trigger the deployment process. Okay, and once that deployment is uh, triggered, um, I will actually have to um, uh, to wait a bit. So once uh, the deployment's finished, then um, you will see that FDA. So let me flip back to FDA. Okay, so FDA will actually um, see that uh, their um, uh, change uh, channel, uh, their uh, ledger join request, it's it's approved and it's it's deployed. So at that point of time, as you saw throughout the process, FDA has no visibility on uh, who's on the ledger. They will have trust. Uh, they will have to trust the. Um, uh, the network they're joining, or they have to know the network they're joining, uh, and let uh, the participants on the network to drive the process of adding them on the ledger. So um, if I click here on the channels, you now see that um, FDA is part of my trial channel, okay? So I do have my node, and all I have to do is actually to join my peer, my FDA peer on the trial channel. Okay. Once the <clears throat> once I join the um, the peer on the trial channel, um, what I can do is actually to to deploy my my own web application. It's already pre-built, by the way, so that's why it looks easy. But in general, there is a a particular um, implementation of that uh, web application as that's been deployed. So, um, uh, where I am? Oh, yeah, let's see if my peer joined the channel. Yes, my peer joined the channel. So, that means at that point now, FDA uh, is, um, is having the ledger. So, this means they are able to see all the information uh, that, uh, that's there, all the transactions that have been done so, so far. So let's take a look at the application. Application is actually a simple Docker container. It's, it's just a web exposing the um, uh, web blockchain or the ledger transaction uh, through um, uh, web APIs. So as you see, it's just um, working with the trial channel. And I will just deploy my application. I'll give it a couple of seconds. To finish, and that's my endpoint. <clears throat> so the other thing that um, I, I'm just realizing that we are missing is actually the smart contract itself, right? So um, I already have the smart contract here, which is the trial. Uh, CC, but um, I haven't, uh, I believe I haven't installed okay. that on my, um, uh, on my uh, peer. Okay, so I will have to install because that's the smart contract that's going to return the information from the ledger to me. So what I will do, I will um, in, uh, create a version V1 uh, and um, sorry, I have to take the branch of the uh, not the branch, the, uh, yeah, the branch is develop. Okay, <clears throat> so I will have to, that's actually a chain code has been deployed from, from uh, Git, a Git repository, by the way. So that's where the smart contract is. So at the peer, so my peer is bootstrap, so I'll just trigger the installment of my uh, chain code on the peer. So actually when I run my web application, it can take the information through the smart contract, uh, from the ledger that uh, I just joined. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's see how the, if the application is live, it will take time, of course, for the chain, uh, smart contract to get deployed. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see what the status is, uh, what I've just done. Oh yeah, it's already deployed, okay. So all I have to do is just to request my web application. Let me see, oh yeah, perfect, it's been deployed. <clears throat> yep, 
Okay, now you see it's spinning and the reason because if it's spinning is because the smart contract on the peer, on the FDA peer is not yet up. Uh, it takes, um, may take a minute uh, to actually uh, bring up the smart contract alive on the peer. So that's why it's spinning. Uh, just, um, we need to give it some time. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so let's go back to our view. So remember that the two applications here, FDA, um, sorry, Nova and uh, the hospital, they have the same view, right? On the uh, on the same uh, ledger on the trial chain code, so they can see the information there. So just do expect that after I uh, get my uh, smart contract up and running on FDA, I'll be able to see the same, very same application, the very same information. Yeah, finally it's up. Okay, so as you see, that's my FDA view, okay? And I can see actually all the transactions that have been recorded so far. And let's say that there is a new case coming in, okay? So a uh, new patient comes to Boston with another uh, hospital with uh, a complaint. So let's say that guy Samuel, and he's having um, uh, sore uh, both of pain, okay? Uh, bone pain, not and we record the case <clears throat> okay so after i do record the case let's uh, refresh my nova view okay so as you see i just recorded that case uh, that case on the ledger so nova sees the information right away and uh, fda will see the same um, in real time Okay, so that now I have a, a trial case, smart contract, that's been deployed on three organizations, um, FDA, Nova, and the Boston Hospital, and they have the same consistent view across the process of, of, uh, of uh, trial. It is a very simple um, approach here just to showcase the um, uh, the capability of the application. But again, in general, what you will do, technically speaking, is that you will have integration of those applications within the ecosystem or the application uh, stacks and technologies that run on each uh, partner. For example, you will do an integration in FDA. It may not look exactly the same at all. It could be a mobile application or whatnot, or could be integrated and embedded in their own existing applications. And uh, you, uh, you, have, uh, you will uh, actually do, every organization will do the same integration and the same implementation on, on their side. But what is the most important part is that those, uh, the information is actually the, 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 ver the very essential information that's needed for those partners or those business entities is recorded on the ledger uh, and endorsed by the peers that are part of the um, network. Okay, so um, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, um, that's um, that's oh, actually, um, yeah, sorry, it's just that, uh, yeah, that's that's all. There is one last slite, um, um, it's, it's just about, I you, figure you can take um, a for look the last uh, three minutes, we should probably, uh, yeah, we should probably open up to questions, <laughs> exactly, and, exactly. <laughs> and we did have a question from Erica that was, um, she sees the use case is mainly focused on pharmacovigilance, reporting ADRs. Uh, is this just an example or are you recording other steps of the trial? Hello, C can you repeat the question, Mike? Sorry. Yeah, uh, it's hey, in the it's, chat. Yeah, Erica, you can ask. Me. Yeah, um, I was just curious. I know you're using pharmacovigilance as an example for what you're recording um, on with Hyperledger. And I was just wondering if you are you know, if you're planning to record other steps of the trial or if you're mainly focused on pharmacovigilance, because I used to be a, I used to be involved in pharmacovigilance, so I was just curious. 
Oh, yeah, that's that's very overly simplified for the demo. Actually, behind the scene, uh, there is a lot of other information and multiple ledgers involved. It's not just one. For the demo, I'm just showing the, the happy path, one straightforward uh, use case. So uh, when we are talking about uh, what you record uh, on the ledger, um, there are a couple of dimensions there we'll have to consider. How many ledgers we want to uh, use, and the ledger means uh, purely to achieve pure privacy between uh, two participants on, on my uh, business network. Uh, right, right now I'm showing three participants, right? So that's going to be the regulator, the pharma company, and the hospital. But have in mind that in one trial there might be multiple hospitals that participate. And no, they don't... Yeah, I, under I understand that. I was just wondering if you're also exactly. reporting... If you're recording consent, if you're recording the steps exactly. of the trial, or if you're focused oh, yes. on oh, just yes. oh yes, uh, okay. Just yeah, wondering. that's that's and there there or is that. How right. are you recording consent? I, I, I'd like to yeah. dive into that more. So the um, the um, uh, consent, it's uh, I had a drawing somewhere, but <laughs> it will be take time for me to find it. So the consent is very essential part of of the process, right? So um, uh, this is where uh, someone needs to capture it first. So that's gonna be uh, the organization that drives that uh, comes up with the only one that uh, can do that, right? So there is a policy like who can endorse a transaction in Fabric, so you can actually. Um, uh, give the endorsement um, rights to the organization that captures the concept of the patient. Now, that capturing um, usually comes with the patient data. That That is actually something that you may not necessarily want to keep on the ledger. And the reason is uh, because uh, some of this data is, is private, right? So you don't want to share it. If you really want to verify, though, the data, this is when you record it as a private data collection. That's a capability of Fabric. So you actually can have the hash code of the data and everyone can validate, actually verify that, that the consent is actually um, uh, based on, um, on a valid uh, uh, patient. So you cannot actually fake the system saying, hey, I have a consent for someone uh, and just make it up. Right, so it will be um, a, a synchronization with um, existing patient database on that that you probably already have at the hospital, and then taking that hash and putting it on the ledger, so you can actually verify um, later on for each case who's actually the patient without exposing uh, a single detail on the patient, like address, name, age, and all of that. Some of those indicators, of course, could be exposed uh, and those indicators may need, or by regulation, may need to be exposed only between particular business partners on the network, not all of them. Again, it's a combination of integration using private data collections and different ledgers, in fact. Any other additional questions? We have time for one more and then I guess we'll have to wrap up uh, our session today. All right, Sven, thank you very much um, for taking the time today to present to our group. Just an update for everyone else. Uh, if you want to contact Zvetin, how could they, how could people uh, reach you eat best? Um, they can reach me on LinkedIn or just send me an email. Um, I have my email. I think I register on the uh, website. So they, um, I think the Hyperledger, right? Uh, the list there. Um, let me just... I think there is a list of uh, uh, email re uh, list, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I already entered my name there. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Yeah. We can so, also just so you your... can you can find my uh, detail from uh, from there. Okay. Awesome. All right. And uh, just for an update for um, for Leah and Sai, we are going to have a general meeting next week. No mm -hmm. um, no presenters, so uh, it could be more of an open forum and give. Uh, community updates but uh Veta, thank you very much for the time today 
and uh and we'll see you all next week thank you thanks thanks thanks, thank you. thanks ben. thank you bye bye, -bye.